HeroQuest. Anybody that knows me knows that HeroQuest had a huge influence me on me and my style of gaming um, as a youngster of 11 or 12 years old when I first came into contact with it. It led me to the love, a deep, deep love of dungeon crawlers and playing RPGs with miniatures. Some people like it, some people don't. I like both, but I happen to love playing RPGs with miniatures. So over the years, I've collected quite a lot of beautiful fantasy 28 millimeter miniatures. And they sit in a bag. They sit in a padded foam bag all year round. And then whenever I want to play an RPG with my kids or whatever, I have to go hunting for it and uh, don't get me started. So, I had a conversation with my wife. Justin, cue the sad music. Not that sad music. Different track, different track. Okay, that's better, right. I want to be able to display a lot of my 28 mil painted RPG minis. So I spoke to my wife about creating a wall display where, that I could have up on the wall where I'd be able to put my minis uh, in situ. Kind of like a large diorama. And I explained to her, look, I can make it fit with the furniture that we already have in the living room. And I really want to do it now because I have wrist issues creeping up on me. And if I leave it too long, I may not be able to do it. I just physically may not be able to do it with all the clipping and everything else that I have to do. She agreed on the condition that it's not crap. So I need to make sure whatever I build isn't crap. So let me talk you through the idea. And then over the next few weeks, over a regular vlog series, I'm going to have a crack at building this dungeon display of awesomeness. So let me start with what I'm building it into. This, these boxes here are Besta from Ikea. And I happen to have some Besta uh, pieces in our living room already. So if I open up this one, so this is Besta Oak. And what you get is a little cabinet like this. So what I intend to do is to try and find a way to retrofit three of these cabinets into, together into one long cabinet, which um, I can then mount onto the wall. And in that cabinet will be a vertical and a horizontal dungeon. Um, and I can use that to place all my miniatures on and this oh, what I'm hoping will be a beautifully detailed and vibrant and living dungeon. The dungeon itself, I had a couple of routes that I could go down. If I went down, I've, I've been a long -term, time fan of her starts and casting dungeon pieces, but I have two issues um, to go down that route. One is time. By the time I would have casted all of that, it'll be um, maybe next year before I'd be starting to build. Secondly, and I've managed to paper cut myself. I can't even open a box without damaging myself. Secondly is weight. If I do it in resin, it might be kind of light, but it's going to take a very long time to work with. If I do it in something like a Herculite dental plaster, um, the weight is going to be enormous. So, I have an alternative, a beautiful, spectacular alternative. The Dungeons & Lasers plastic kit from Archon. They ran a Kickstarter a few months ago where they had both sci-fi terrain and fantasy terrain in these beautiful modular um, plastic components. So they're very jigsaw-like, you know, they go together, so you can kind of clip them together like so, and then pop in your walls and create all these interesting 
and and really really detailed um, uh, dungeon um, layouts. Now, for most of us, we imagine a kind of like a dungeon laid out, you know, flat, like so. But it occurred to me that because of the wall pieces, I might be able to turn this into a viable vertical dungeon, like so. Now, I will have some bits and pieces that I have to contend with in all of this, but we'll do that as we go along. The beauty of this is, being plastic, it's going to be very robust, it takes the paint beautifully, and it's light. So I'm not going to be adding a huge amount of additional um, weight to the, the structure of the cabinet that I'm going to build. Let me show you how it comes. So this stuff here, what I have so far, is I have a couple of the fantasy core sets, okay? So this is your core dungeon, and these are your sprues. So in there, you get some floors with a wall piece. Two, three, four, five, six of those. And then you get these lovely wall pieces, and they're all double-sided. So you've got different kind of layouts that you can use. And you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. And then finally, you get these connector pieces. So um, these are your double connectors. This is a single piece that you can use to pop a wall on. So a double connector goes there and allows this kind of thing to happen. And then one of these half-sized ones can go there and allow you to pop in a wall at the end. I have started clipping these because uh, the way I approach these projects is I try to clip them out and have uh, lots, of little, lots of little bits and pieces all sitting handy because really the first part of this project is going to be so much fun. It's like Lego dungeons. I'm just going to be building and tearing apart and putting back together again until I find a layout uh, that I'm happy with. I have also got three little add-on packs. Um, let me just open these so as you can see. So this one is called the Hall of Heroes Fantasy Room. Now these are kind of alternative, I believe they were stretch goals at the time, and they're alternative floor plans and layouts. So you get these lovely additional details um, that I'm hoping will allow me to set up specific areas of the dungeon that just look a little bit different, like they've been, you're going a deeper level. So I have the Hall of Heroes, which is very, in my opinion, very dwarven. I have the Warlock's Altar. So let's get a look at the sprues in this one. Now the Warlock's Altar is very interesting because you get bookshelves. Now there's going to be a bit of painting in that, but who cares? Um, that is going to be stunning when you look in and you see these kind of uh, books and things. And there's also some more interesting patterns and some pentagrams and things on the, on the floor. So that is another option. And then finally, one of my favorites, because the, the, the initial styles of this came on the demo packs that Archon sent out before the Kickstarter had launched, is the torture chambers. And what I happen to love about this particular pack is the wooden, wooden floor. So much so, in fact, that I may try to get a bit more of this because I really love the contrast between the wooden floor and the stone walls. I think it, it just works really, really well. So in this, you get lots of skeletons kind of placed into the walls, um, coffin lids up against the walls, and of course then the wooden, the wooden floors themselves. So there are three additional options that I have to break up the look and the texture of this dungeon. So as you're looking at it, I would like maybe some hot spots, I'm going to call them, places within the dungeon that are 
um, that are stand out different in some way. So you have the lots of the corridors and things like that, but but key identifiable areas that uh, that that call out to your eye and draw you in. Dressing the dungeon is also a possibility because here is another stretch goal from that Kickstarter where they have lots of the dungeon components because you don't want your dungeon just to be completely plain. What I'm going to have is lots and lots of debris and furnishings and things like that in the dungeon. So here we get uh, lots of little books and chests, barrels, circular staircases, levers, very important levers, shields that can go onto the walls as decoration, and torches that can go on uh, to the walls as decoration. In addition to that, there's uh, some creepy statues, some more coffins, and weapon racks. There are also in that same kit a load of sci-fi ones, but I'm going to keep them for a future project. So my two sci-fi sprues, they will go into storage while I work up with these. And again, um, I may introduce a, a, some uh, other options because there are other options from Mantic called Terrain Crate, which once again are beautiful dungeon pieces that I will have all glued into situ. The only thing that should be able to come on and off um, is the miniatures. The, the actual dungeon itself will be a complete and fixed uh, diorama of some sort. So, I have some ideas. The, what I intend to do now is to bust open the best stuff and to spend a bit of time looking at it and how I'm going to, put, to combine the three individual cabinets into one large, continuous, uninterrupted cabinet. So I need to look at how I'm going to strengthen the Besta and uh, keep it that uh, it's not going to fall apart under its own weight or the weight of the diorama I intend to build into it. I'm then going to um, move on to starting to Lego brick all of this together to try and get a feel for how it, how it will fit in, what the dimensions are like, and how I'm going to keep it rigid. But I have a few wee ideas that I'm also playing with. I'm considering building some LED lighting into this project because one of the things that I have noticed is on the walls, there's these holes, okay? Now, in these holes, you can plug things like lanterns, etc. So what I'm considering is filling up all of these gaps so that um, the only light that penetrates through would come through the holes. And then either seeing if Archon have ever produced the lanterns and things in a clear plastic or potentially 3D printing clear uh, resin lanterns that I can press into that. So when all of this is built into the, the actual structure, I can have a large LED panel behind it all and it glowing and flickering and the light coming through those into the little lanterns to give the whole thing an alive uh, effect of some sort. At least that's the plan, but we're still a ways from that. Right. I'm hoping you'll join me on this journey. Remember to subscribe to the channel to get updates, um, uh, uh, hopefully weekly, uh, for the next few weeks as I progress through this. Um, if you have ideas on uh, what you would like to see in the dungeon as I, as I progress, please post them below and um, uh, we'll get a dialogue going and see where we can take this project. In the meantime, I'm also going to be keeping a close eye on the new Archon Kickstarter that is a, a new version of this, an improved version of this that takes this another level. Um, uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And yeah, let's see if I can manage to create something beautiful enough that the, it can represent me in the living room and Andrea will look at it and go, yeah, 
I did the right thing letting you build that. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.